Hi, I am Don McCarty, and I am here tonight with Elise and Nat, and we are talking about another experience of adult surviving survivor of uh, alienation. This one's a little bit different, so I'm going to pass it on over to Elise where we can get started. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Elise Price Tobler. I'm a psychotherapist and a lived experience. Um, adult of severe parental alienation myself. So this um, t interview today, is, we're actually going to go outside of the box a little bit um, with regards to an alienation story with an adult survivor as well. So hers is a little bit different. Um, Nat is in the room with us. Um, she's choosing to stay off camera, so that's perfectly fine. So anyone else who'd like to come forward and tell their story at any time about their parental alienation, what it's been like for them and their family, or if they have a parent with a mental illness or anything like that, you don't have to be on camera. So um, Natalie's mother has a narcissistic personality disorder and her parents are actually not divorced, but Natalie's not seeing either of them at the moment because of the amount of serious alienation that's actually been going on between her mother and herself and her siblings within the family. So this is a little unusual. So we're going, um, Natalie also works in mental health herself. So she's going to bring us insight um, and s about what that's actually like to work in mental health, what she sees in mental health potentially, what it's like to have a mum who's displaying narcissistic personality disorder. And um, yeah, it should be a really, really interesting interview. So welcome, Natalie, and thank you so much for taking the time out to share your experience with us in the hope that other people will be able to hear you and not feel as isolated and um, as they potentially are now. So yeah, what, what would you like to bring into the room firstly, Nat? Um, yeah, I guess I just wanted to say that um, I suppose often you see people with narcissistic personality disorder uh, involved in parental alienation through the courts, etc., with divorces and separation. But mine's situation is probably a little bit different in that, um, as you said, I believe my mother has narcissistic personality disorder, or at least traits, and possibly some borderline personality traits. And as far as I'm aware, she's never um, sought help for those. And she has, I, I, for as long as I can remember, um, tried to alienate me from my father and also at different points, um, me from my siblings and also my uh, extended family as well. So, um, yeah, my story's a little bit different, but I hope it sort of, um, fits with what you're looking for and it, that it might help some other people that are listening. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Nat. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be people watching who will identify with your story because we know that parental alienation doesn't necessarily mean that the couple has to be separated or divorced. We know that it plays out um, in families all the time. So, and... Um, yeah, so your story is very, very interesting. So it's a unique perspective that we don't hear a lot of. So, you know, yeah. we're grateful that you are bringing this forward because there's probably a lot of people out there that don't really feel like they fit in with the parental alienation side. So maybe they don't come forward and this might help other people to see that, you know, it is still a tragedy, a tragic thing that happens to a child and that it, they have a voice as well. Yes. Yep, that's great. Um, I was just thinking, you are, I think when I was talking to you, Elise, the other day, you asked, you know, how come your mum and dad didn't get divorced? And um, their relationship is certainly dysfunctional and they probably shouldn't be together. But I thought about what you said and you know, I've read up a lot about narcissistic personality and my dad is the ultimate supply for her. Um, so she she starts intense relationships with other people and she'll have a new best friend every week and then she'll have a falling out with them. So she doesn't really have any close friends. 
Um, Mum and dad live in a small, not a small, um, it used to be semi-rural, but it's more built up now, but it's a very close community and she's burnt her bridges there. A lot of people don't like her there. She uh, lost her job at the local primary school um, and lost her registration for teaching. So she wow. really, uh, so what I'm trying to say is she doesn't have any close friends. She doesn't belong to the community and she, uh, her mother is also a narcissist. So she doesn't really have anyone else but my dad. And then also, I suppose she had a family so she could feel like she's got people that are never going to leave her because she doesn't really have anybody else. So I, I think that's why she's never, even though she at least once a week says that she hates dad and wants to, wants a divorce and, and things like that, it, I, I don't think that would ever happen. Okay. So you're the oldest in your, of the children in your family, aren't you? Yes. Okay, and you've got younger siblings? Yes. Yeah, okay, so, and your mum's a teacher, I'm hearing as well. She, she was. Was. Yep. Okay, so um, I think the other day when we spoke, you were mentioning about how your mum's actually uh, separated or uh, split your one of your sisters and turned her against you at this point as Lisa. well yep yep um did you did you want me to explain that yeah situation? that would be really good yeah or what what i think has happened yeah so, yeah um, there are uh four of us so i'm the eldest my brother is the second eldest and he's only two years younger and then i have two little sisters one's eight years younger and one is 10 years younger. So there was a situation in which my youngest sister and the middle sister and my youngest sister's husband were all living with mum and dad because they needed, to, they wanted to save money and um, maybe get a place of their own eventually. And it wasn't working out as it doesn't because it's, she's too difficult to live with. So my middle sister, who's similar in personality to me, um, and her husband arranged to move out and they got a private rental and they asked my middle sister to come with them. Um, and they said, we'll pay your rent. We'll, you know, we'll, we'll cover you until you get yourself sorted and get a proper job and get on your feet. And so she agreed and she moved in with them and it didn't last very long at all. And she ended up moving out on my, my middle sister ended up moving out on my younger sister and her husband and she didn't even tell them she was moving out. She just took her stuff. Actually, she didn't take all of her stuff. She left some of it there, like even her bed, and just left. And we found out that she'd moved back in with mum. And there was um, a little bit of talk between my little sister and the, the middle sister. Um, but then she completely ditched the both of us. So I'm not even involved in this. I mean, not that anybody's done anything wrong, but she's also cut me off. She's um, unfriended me on Facebook. She doesn't communicate with me anymore and I haven't spoken to her since and, and she hasn't spoken to my little sister either and it's just really bizarre and I think that my mother is behind this um, whether directly or indirectly. Um, she's worked very hard to disable my middle sister. Um, I'll give you an example. So I was underfed and skinny growing up um, like my dad used to get um, call me olive oil from Popeye because I was so skinny. Um, but she deliberately overfed my middle sister and she was morbidly obese. And um, I think that was one of the ways of disabling that sister and making her dependent. And now she's reeled her back in somehow. Um, and she's different. My middle sister's different in personality to my little sister and I. She's quite placid and a people pleaser, whereas me and my little sister like don't care. We're just like, no, nah, this is what I want. I don't care what you want. I can see what you're trying to do and you're trying to manipulate. Um, so she's been pulled back in to mum. And now I think to uh, receive the care that she's looking for or to, to have all of her needs met I think she feels that she has to cut us off because she feels guilty talking to us um, I know that she's unemployed and her and her boyfriend at the moment are both unemployed and living at mum and dad so 
mum and dad are covering everything there at the moment for them. So, yeah, I have a feeling that's also why she's cut us off. This okay. is certainly so, an interesting twist in it where it's the mom alienating one child against the rest of the family, the rest of the children, her children. So that's... Yeah. That is... I, I have because she doesn't align with her. Yeah. Because she doesn't align with her and she has a stronger personality. And I'm guessing she it's reminding her, because I think the other day when Nat and I spoke, her mum, it's, it's, it's very, um, uh, what did you say, Natalie? Um, it's highly likely her mum was abused sexually as a child yeah. and by one of the italian side of the family or the darker side of the family and so nat might have some of the traits coming through from that side of the family so there's this really big kind of ball of string at play here at the moment that natalie's involved in how about your your is it your brother that yes are you still close with him no, because he's the golden child and um, he can do no wrong in mum's eyes and she uses him as, I'm just using all this narcissism talk, he's one of her flying monkeys. So when I do something wrong, mum sends him to punish me. Wow. So he what does that look like, Nat? Um, sometimes it's physical, because my brother's very big and muscly. Mum um, says things like, I'm going to send you... Um, like she, she would have said to me, if my little sister did something wrong, I'm going to send your brother around there to sort them out, meaning to bash us up. Um, my brother did physically, like when he was younger and I was bigger, he didn't physically abuse me. But as he got bigger, he I can think of one instance where he threw me and I went into a, a bike and I hit my head on the um, handlebar and... I went to school and I actually got sent home because I had a concussion. Wow. So, um, so yes, she uses him in that way. And I actually just had, uh, I just recalled something um, where this is not mum trying to sabotage dad and my relationship, but I had a hens party when I was getting married and I didn't really want a proper hens. I just wanted a gathering. And my ex's sister used to say she wanted to meet my sisters because she said, oh, they sound really funny. So I thought, okay, like situations like that cause me a lot of stress. I usually try and separate my family from my friends because I'm embarrassed and I don't want them to meet, not necessarily my siblings, but my mum. So I usually just sort of avoid those situations. But I thought I would invite my little sisters and they, the middle one was living with, mum and dad at the time and because my mum knew that they were, my sisters were getting ready and to go out to come to the city to my hens she started a fight at home and then neither of my sisters came to my hens wow was so, she invited nat to the hens sorry? night was your mum invited to the hens night no none of the it wasn't a proper hens where you invite mums and aunties and grandma yeah. and, and you do all those it was just like my friends and then my ex's sister because she was young she was in her 20s and then my little sisters it was just for the younger girls to go out just to a bar and okay. you know yeah so she wasn't invited and she caused a scene at home and then my little sisters were too upset to come <laughs> okay so basically it just absolutely ruined the night for I everybody I was trying to have fun, but I was really upset the whole night. Yeah. I'm really sorry, Nat. That's just not okay. What, what happened that night? It's just not okay. Sorry, John, no. what, what, what were you going to ask? I was just thinking along the lines of now that you're an adult, you've, you're married, do you, do you have children? And then what does that look like? Um, so this is one of the ways that... She has alienated me. She has alienate, alienated me, as I see it, from wanting to have my own family. I refuse to have children because of her. One of, that's one of the big reasons. I don't know what a mother is. Um, I've not been shown what a mother is. Um, and I'm, I am so scared that I will turn out like her. Like, if I get upset and, and yell at my pet bird, 
I feel guilty and sick, like I want to vomit. Like I'm like, you're turning into her, you're just like her. So, and I so just feel that my family is so dysfunctional that it stops with me. There's no more trauma genes being passed on to anyone. Um, I've got a couple of autoimmune conditions from this as well. Um, not, not just her, but it's also played out in that I keep hooking up with narcissistic men and I'm currently divorcing a narcissist as well. So narcissist, 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 they're everywhere. I feel like and when I see the statistics for how many of them there are in the population, they should, I don't think they're accurate. I think that there are way more than what the statistics say. And if um, we were to put a lens on the child sexual abuse stuff just for a second and the intergenerational trauma that maybe your mum experienced that created the personality disorder in the first place, do you know much about what's happened to her, Nat? Because sometimes I think if we try and look at this stuff, it softens a little bit the impact on us um, Yep. Not saying that it's not absolutely bloody awful, but I know in my case, if I try and think about what the events were in my mother's childhood, I can kind of get why she's like she is now. So could yep. do you see anything? Can you speak to that at all? Um, I only heard, so I'm close with my auntie, my mum's sister. Um, and she told me that they were both molested. She didn't tell me who by, um, but I know that my mum's mum is a massive narcissist and mum's dad was an alcoholic. I never saw him sober. So she grew up in that environment. They were immigrants, um, and they lived in a poor area. They lived, yeah, lived in, um, commission housing in a poor area. And I think my grandmother had to basically work and be the money earner because my grandfather was drunk and lost his job all the time. So I think they grew up quite poor and um, also with dysfunctional parents. And then I'm possibly on top of that, she was molested by a family member. Okay. So the, the trauma just, you know, I, I can see where a lot of our parents might have that trauma thing too that is definitely being um it's that transgenerational just passing it on like you were talking about the genes just yep. you know yep. out and you know um definitely a personal choice but it's really affected you in the yep. choosing not to have children that's a huge that's a huge impact on someone my mother also used to tell me that she hoped and that I will have a horrible daughter just like myself one day. My mom said the exact same thing to me. I hope yeah. I'm not just like you. Like you. And I, and I used to go, good. They'll be intelligent. They'll be creative. They'll be... Uh, uh, yeah. You know, the, the positive word for stubborn I'm trying to think of, but they're all the traits that she doesn't like in me because I refuse to be a pushover and accept this abuse. I think that is very ironic that those words are used to like almost condemn us. Yeah. Yes. Yes, I agree. And that is a thread that I'm really identifying with at the moment too, Nat. So um, any time I would speak up or have a voice, yeah. I would be seen to be going against my mother and that wasn't okay at all. And then the gaslight yep. would start and the you're unwell stuff. You're crazy. Yep. Yeah, then she's starting to collect alliances from other family members. Now they're yep. all thinking the same thing. Now yep. she's getting more and more attention around that. And in the meantime, I just, I had to learn that's, that's her stuff. Yep. That's not who I am because the amount of years that I actually was just leaking energy into that and staying in the enmeshment of it and just being, oh, my God, this dysregulated little person without a voice who didn't know who I was. It's like, oh, here we go again. I've stepped outside 
the um, comfort zone. Like I've done something, I've spoken up. This is really not going to go in my favour at all. I, I really, really, really need to go back in there to get get her approval again. And this is that love bombing stuff that they talk about too. I don't know if you've experienced that, Nat, but once you yep. step back in, they'll start to, well, first you'll get penalised, but then the love bombing will start and then, th yes. then they'll withdraw it. So, and then you're back in this constant state of dysregulation and your system is just on hypervigilant all the time. Which it's very is conditional. The, it's conditional. There's there is no unconditional oh. love there. It's, con it's conditional. Yes, definitely. Yeah. My my mo my mother, as I, I spoke to you the other night, Elise, about um, sometimes I feel like she has dissociative identity disorder because there's de two distinct personalities within her, and I call one of them the baby voice, and she'll speak in this really soft like child's voice and she'll go from being screaming and abusive and horrible to going um I'll, I'll take you shopping i'll buy you whatever clothes you want um oh just just ridiculous like oh you've always wanted a horse well, you know we'll get you a horse for christmas all this kind of just over the top and then you know fluctuating back into the screaming ranting raving person again at the drop of a hat so yeah Honestly. she definitely she would do the love bombing and i've also in the two narcissistic relationships with men oh actually no there's a, since i've been dating and single in the last 18 months i've also dated another narcissist but i was on to him quick smart and he's blocked and deleted mm. You know, uh, thank you, interesting, Elise. I think I talked to you about this, about the the different personalities and how I've named them, and how she just kind of almost, you know, different names but almost identical. Um, with that personalities. I I don't know. I, I didn't want to diagnose my mom, but I've called them her personalities, and so it's really interesting to hear that happen in another situation. My mother yeah. also said to us one day, she said, do you know what, kids? And we went, what? And she's like, I think I'm about seven, seven years old. And I went, yeah, that sounds about right, mum. So even she is sort of subconsciously aware that that's where she's stuck at seven. Mum is 10. And I've, oh. I've, told, I've told people I've been raised by a 10-year-old. and Yes, seven-year-old. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Super interesting. That's, yeah. And a lot of that we know is the arrest. Um, if we're, that's the age that we're seeing from the work that I do in my um, practice. That's often when the abuse was arrested. Like if I yep. can have people in front of me and I speak to that age, that's often correlates when, when the abuse was happening for that person. That's my experience in my practice. But um, with regards to this, the sexual abuse stuff, your your ex, Nat, also had sexual abuse stuff too. That's a really interesting story, what's going on in that family as well. Yeah. Yep. Did you want me to explain? Oh, yeah, I'd love you to if you would yep. like to share that yep. as well. 